with Tony Khan teasing a dream signing for AEW and Raw seeing an increase in viewers thanks to Brock Lesnar. This is Wrestling Hub. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report for January 5th. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official and also follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. In an interview with Sporting News, NXT champion Braun Breaker touched on joining WWE and learning about NXT 2.0. I just showed up to work every day and wanted to be a good soldier. I treated it like football and other sports that I was in prior to wrestling. When you show up to the building, you have to be coachable and do what you're told. You have to be a good person and be a good representation of your team. So that's just all I was doing when I got the call. All I'm doing now is wanting to be a great ambassador and representative of WWE. Given this breakout on the wrestling scene, many have drawn comparisons between Breaker and Brock Lesnar, as Braun had this to say about it. I just take it one day at a time, to be honest with you. Brock is the man. He's been the man for a long time. He's done tons of great things in WWE and obviously went to the UFC to become the champion. If people say that I'm on the same directory as him, then that's pretty cool. He's awesome. But I take it a day at a time and focus on the task at hand. I'm just trying to get better each and every day. Speaking about his son's achievements in WWE thus far, Rick Steiner told Sports Illustrated that he wants to see Braun Breaker become even bigger than the Steiner brothers. I hope he's even more successful than myself and his uncle. We had such a special time traveling the road as brothers, but this tops all of that. This is his time and his chance to carry the torch. Watching that match was one of the best moments of my life. As his father, I couldn't be prouder and so was our whole family. On Busted Open Radio, Bully Ray once again talked about Big E losing his WWE title during the main event of the Day 1 pay-per-view. While he had previously said the former champion was disrespected for not having his entrance be last, he has now noted that E would be better served to chase the title as opposed to holding it. A lot of these babyface champions who were built the right way, you will pay to see retain. Big E is one of those talents where I feel like you pay and you invest your emotion to see him chase another one of these guys. Much like a Kofi Kingston, where you feel like he's been working hard for so long and he deserves better, thus you get behind him because of the chase. Then once it happens and the chase is over, alright fine, we got what we want. Do we really want to invest our, let's forget about time and money, do we really want to invest our emotion in seeing Big E retain? Yeah, there will be some fans who want to do that, but the majority, I'm not quite sure. While many fans expected Big E to retain his title at the most recent pay-per-view, Roman Reigns would test positive for COVID, which led to Brock Lesnar being added to and winning the match. WWE and Fox would post a graphic that seemed to indicate that the original plan was for Big E to retain his title in the Fatal 4-Way. Now, a new report from Dave Meltzer in Sports Illustrated reveals the initial plans. The original scripted plan for the show was for Big E to lose the championship, but to Seth Rollins, who had tested positive for COVID-19 last week, and the champion instead lost his title to Lesnar, as the result of another positive test. Ringside News would also report that plans for the feud between Lesnar, Reigns, and Heyman will not change due to day one, as we should see the storyline culminate at WrestleMania. Sticking with the main event of day one, Booker T went on this Hall of Fame podcast to discuss Big E's loss of the WWE title, as he compared it to him losing to Triple H at WrestleMania for the World Heavyweight Championship. I remember when I lost to Triple H. People really felt a certain way the next morning, because the story was, I should have won. Big E was in a position where a lot of people feel like, man, he should have won. But there again, he has the chance to come back and redeem himself. Seriously, people still feel a certain way about it. This 
despite being the Intercontinental Champion in WWE, Shinsuke Nakamura has had more tag team matches than singles bouts, with him opening up on this while speaking to Tokyo Sports. After all, I want to get involved in the highest throne. I have the Intercontinental Championship, but I often team up with Boogs, and I have more tag matches than singles. Come to think of it, everyone is in a duo, like veterans and young people. Even on NXT, it's like Handsome Jiro and Kushida. Is it to increase the chances of appearing on the program together while raising young talent by forming a combination? Anyway, since I came to WWE, I can achieve the Grand Slam if I get one WWE World Championship, so I would like to aim for that. On his podcast, Ric Flair talked about his match against Brock Lesnar in 2002 on Monday Night Raw. Despite Lesnar being a rookie, Flair mentioned that he was very thankful for Brock taking care of him during the bout. Brock Lesnar took care of me. He never hurt me, and I will tell you that. When he latches onto you, you will never go anywhere. The first time I wrestled him was the night Steve Austin quit in Atlanta, and Vince said, you're now part of Raw. I thought I owned Raw. He said, you're wrestling Brock Lesnar tonight. Recently, Andrade teased Ric Flair making an appearance for AEW, as we'll have to see if anything comes of that. WWE has been rolling in it thanks to the releases stemming from the pandemic and their deal with having SmackDown on Fox and their streaming deal with NBCU. Former WWE writer Freddie Prince Jr. recently took to his podcast to claim that an executive from Fox told him that WWE wanted the media giant to buy WWE in its entirety. I was talking to a dude who was interviewing to be their COO, or the dude they wanted to interview. They ended up going with Nick Khan, my friend had passed. He just wanted to talk to me about the company. We are talking about the brand and he goes, they wanted us to buy the whole product. He was an executive at Fox. They wanted us to buy the whole brand, but the number they wanted wasn't a number we were going to pay, so we licensed SmackDown instead. I said, were you even considering the job? No, I just wanted to talk to you and make sure I wasn't crazy and losing my mind. It's a crazy place to work. You have a nice job in LA. Your family is in LA. Stay in LA. I knew they were going to sell a long time ago off that, and that hit me like a ton of bricks. With Kurt Angle working for TNA from 06 to 2016, he revealed who he thinks was the unsung hero for the promotion. On his podcast, Angle said that, the unsung hero that I think, I love Vince Russo. I don't know how fans think about him or how they feel about him, but Vince was very talented. The success he had in WWE was phenomenal, the Attitude Era. When he went to WCW, the problem was he was writing for the wrestlers and they were like, I'm not doing that, I'm going to do whatever I want. So his storylines turned into something else, because the wrestlers turned it into whatever they wanted, so it got diluted. I think that's the reason that WCW kind of went downhill. When he was in TNA, he was phenomenal. He wrote for me every week. I didn't have any problems with him. I know there are some fans that don't like him. There are some wrestlers that don't like him, but Vince was very talented. Yesterday, a video was circulating of Sasha Banks landing awkwardly on her leg while taking a backbreaker from Charlotte Flair during a live event match. While Banks would take to Twitter to let fans know that she is alright, PW Insider would report that the word making the rounds at Raw this past Monday night was that Sasha Banks was dealing with a sprained leg coming out of her match with Charlotte Flair in Fayetteville, North Carolina. After a successful career in WWE, Batista's transitioned to being a star in Hollywood. But did you know he tried out for WCW prior to making his debut for OVW? With SK Wrestling, former WCW star and trainer Sergeant Buddy Lee Parker recalled Batista's WCW power plant tryout in 1999. You know what? WCW was set up for training program there. He did come for a tryout. I did run him off, but I knew WCW was not going to take him like he was. I thought I did him a great favor going to WWE because I sent him to the Cincinnati, whatever their training ground is called but he still holds it against me. But all things looking at it, it was the best thing to happen for him. Well, it wasn't necessarily him. It was most necessarily with WCW because they didn't have a program for him to go to. Batista would even recount his experience of being run out the door as he noted on talk is Jericho, I went down there at 340 pounds, was all jacked up. Went down with a buddy of mine and Sarge jumped in our faces and just got on us. And he wanted nothing more than to just run us out the door. He was just a bitter troll of a man. Thank you. 
After becoming the inaugural Queen of the Ring in Saudi Arabia last year, Zelina Vega said on the Cheap Heat podcast that her current run is the shot she's always wanted in WWE. I feel like this is the shot I've been waiting for, and this is the thing that I need to go, okay, you've been wanting for something for so long. This is the time to show them and prove them right. They gave you this opportunity, prove them right. You know, and I always say, give me the ball. If I drop it, screw me. But if you don't do it, then you won't know. I just feel like now more than ever, I have a fire under me like I've never had before. With AEW signing the likes of CM Punk, Brian Danielson, and Adam Cole last year, fans are wondering who could be next to come. With the likes of Johnny Gargano, Bray Wyatt, and even the Briscoes looking to be possibilities, AEW President Tony Khan was asked if this dream signing is in North America or not. As responded to Josh Martinez of Z100, there is. They are in North America. And they're coming. And pretty soon. And it's going to be awesome. I'm very excited. With Brock Lesnar appearing on Monday nights as the WWE Champion, Raw saw an increase in viewers from their last program. WrestleNomics reported that this week's episode brought in over 1.7 million viewers, with a .45 rating in the 18-49 demographic. In contrast to their show on December 27th, which had over 1.5 million viewers and a .38 rating in the previously mentioned demo. Going back another three previous episodes of Raw, the show has been consistently hitting around 1.5-1.6 to 1 .6 million viewers, so it seems apparent that Lesnar is champion is helping out the show. In a new wave of releases, WWE has let their senior VP of consumer products go who had been with the company since December of 2018 according to PW Insider. WWE had also previously fired their senior VP of creative services last month. On top of this, WWE has parted ways with Road Dog as they released this statement. With the continued evolution of NXT 2.0, we've decided to part ways with some of the staff based in our performance center. We thank them for their many contributions throughout the years and we wish them the best. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.